Rob White writes, my beloved Collider Movie Talk. I have a question about the different responsibilities of producers and directors. From what I understand, the director of a movie really is the person whose job it is to turn a script into a piece of art. He hires and directs the actors. He coordinates the crews. He works with the composer and the editor in post-production. His vision, or lack thereof, is ultimately what determines whether a movie is good or bad. And yet, when the Academy Awards give out the trophies for Best Picture, it's the producers who go up and take the credit. So my question is, what is it that the producers actually do? Why do they get the best picture trophies? Aren't they really just the guys who handle the financial aspects of making a film? Martin Scorsese is an artist. Harvey Weinstein isn't really an artist, is he? And while I'm asking, what is an executive producer? I love your show. It's really the only thing besides college football that I watch religiously. Keep up the great work. I feel like we could take this in like the office space route and be like, what is it that you do here? <laughs> Because um, a lot of times you'll see a movie and there'll be like four credit pages of producers, yeah. uh, you know, executive producers, associate producers and stuff like that. A lot of times associate producers, because I have friends that do this, are like assistants to the director or producer and they've been the assistant like four or five movies and finally they just get up to associate producer and their job really doesn't change that much. Um, Producers, why they get the awards on the thing is because they got all the money together in order to get that director to direct the script. And without the money, those movies really don't get made. And I think executive producer is more just like the studio head that greenlit the movie, correct? Well, yeah, or the money person. Yeah. The executive producer is definitely one of those titles where if you have enough money, you can get exec producer right. credit on almost anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we were talking about this before before the show, and producers can do nothing or they can do everything. Right. It really, I, I do think producers are very very important when it comes to filmmaking. I think they're the partner with the director if you get a good one, mm -hmm. and they handle not just finances but also logistics, and you know, and they. They, they also can be involved with the casting process and a lot of important things. They aren't artists, but they have a huge influence over, over movies, mm -hmm. especially if they, they are a producer that is well-known and uh, influential. What? Watch, uh, what's the movie with uh, Kid Stays in the Picture? Mm -hmm. That's a great movie if you want to see like what a producer did kind of back in the day, like 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much it's changed per se, but that documentary really does a good job and, of, of showing. What and also keep in is. mind, somebody has to hire the director. Yeah. So, you know, while, yes, the director pitches their creative vision, the director maybe suggests casting or has worked with talent before, or whatever the case may be, somebody basically has to get that project. or see, And it doesn't always work like this, by the way. Some directors, that you know, find material for themselves. Yeah. But, you know, some Somebody has to have the overall creative vision of whatever the project is and assemble the right team. And you have to hire a director. Mm -hmm. um, Jason Blum is a really cool example of a producer. You know, if, you, if you're if you interested in what producers do today, he's somebody that's doing it differently than studios and big mainstream things. Um, but he's found great success. And Jason is one of those guys who, you know, his whole, um, his whole mantra is the idea that he finds innovative, weird, awesome offbeat things, whether it's already been created or a talent who's come to him and pitched him a story and says, okay, go do your thing. I'm going to oversee. I'll help you, you know, whatever. So, and give them creative freedom, but then also, um, you know, when it comes time to market the movie, when it comes time to sell the film to a distribution or to a studio or something like that. So the answer is, you know, I was telling the guys before we started shooting, I have a book called What, the Produ what a Producer Does. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, like you were saying, everything. It's a whole book and it's a whole book of saying basically nothing yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> again what is it that you do here? No, 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 no. i mean some producer credits you get just because you happen to either own a property that that gets licensed or you happen to be the person that just obtain that and, and and let the studio use it. You could like have nothing to do with the movie other than that and you'll get a producer's credit. There's two guys and you guys in the comments will probably know they optioned the film rights to Batman the comic book back in like way back when. And they've had those rights ever since. Mm -hmm. So every time a Batman movie is made, their name is a producer on the film. Yeah. They don't do anything, yeah. they just own the rights. And at the end of the day, it's basically a line item. Like we gotta pay this producer this much. We can't just give them all random titles, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. It's that once you're like a produ producer on something, you're a producer forever. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And then speaking of the Oscars, I kind of have my own take on it. Okay. I, I have no problem with the producers when the Oscar best picture goes up and they go up and get the Oscar. I do feel 
that they should have a mandatory like slot for the director. So we in the past few years we had um, two movies, Argo and Twelve Years a Slave, where the they both won Best Picture, but the directors, both Ben Affleck and Steve McQueen, did not win Best Director. Mm -hmm. But those two actually got to go up there because they were listed as producers for those movies. But that's not always the case. Directors not always producers on their film. I feel like if you win Best Picture, you obviously producers get it, but they should have a slot where the director automatically gets an Oscar. But Agreed. so for to play, not to play devil's advocate, but to add to that, that's a slippery slope because then if I'm the screenwriter, mm. I'm going, well, I wrote this thing. This thing wouldn't mm. even exist without me. These are, this is my story, my concept, my words. Why don't I get to be on there? I mean, definitely that could be made a case, but I, for me, I understand, I think people will understand that the director is the creative vision. He right, He's the one controlling the ship and he's, the, the reason why the movie's like either good or bad. I mean, that's it's like like a, a coach on an NFL team, right? Like if, if, the, if the team does bad, he gets all the blame. It's not the players. It, 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 if, if he wins, he gets all the credit. So right. I feel like the director is kind of like that. And at the end of the day, there's a reason why directors go through three and four marriages because the job is so hard. You're working 20 hour days because you have to do everything on the film. Same as an NFL coach. Uh, you know, the interview with Jimmy Johnson on the NFL Network, he went through two wives and he's never seen, he never saw any of his kids play any sports because you are in an NFL stadium for eight months of the year if your team is good. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare of a job. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.